There are many things that are driving India and Israel together. Uh, at the most fundamental level, these are both ancient civilizations that are also now young and modern nation states. Uh, India became independent in 1947, Israel became independent in 1948. They're also being driven by shared security concerns. Uh, in many ways, India looks at Israel's security predicament, uh, the threats it faces from groups such as Hamas and Hezbollah, and it looks at its own security predicament and the threat that India faces from groups such as the lashkar e taiba which are sponsored by Pakistan from across the border, and sees striking similarities. And both governments sees, see room for cooperation. Uh, there have been very close defense and intelligence ties, a very close arms relationship. India, Israel is one of India's top arms suppliers, and India is in fact Israel's top export destination for arms. Uh, you find a growing commercial relationship, trade ties which used to be just a few hundred billion dollars in the early 1990s have crossed five billion. And so at many levels, you know, people to people ties, you have many Israeli backpackers after military service spend a year in India. So at, at across the range, you see that since the establishment of economic of diplomatic relations in 1992, uh, this relationship has has flowered in an unprecedented way. Well, I wouldn't say he has altered the relationship. I'd say he has accelerated its deepening. Uh, simply put, Narendra Modi is India's most explicitly pro-Israel Prime Minister ever. This is someone who has visited Israel already as a Chief Minister. He admires Israel, he admires Israel's many achievements, uh, both, uh, both economic and cultural. Uh, he has a lot of natural sympathy for Israel and the predicament it faces, particularly when it's looking at issues such as terrorism. And he has announced that he's going to be the first sitting Indian Prime Minister to visit Israel as a sort of token of that special regard. He has established a good relationship with Netanyahu. I'm not sure if some of you are on Twitter. They were tweeting at each other a few weeks ago. And so it's a good, it's a, it's a good place to be. Uh, both these leaders have much in common. And in Narendra Modi uh, and his party, you have perhaps a collection of some of India's strongest friends of Israel. I'd say in many ways Indonesia is a positive story. Indonesia has successfully broken the back of terrorist groups such as Jama Islamiyah. It has gone after some of the smaller jihadist groups that had sprung up in the chaos of the late 1990s and the early 2000s. It has shown itself able to go after terrorist groups without necessarily rolling back uh, gains in civil liberties and democracy that it achieved after the fall of Suharto in 1998. So on the whole, if I compare Indonesia today to the Indonesia that I left about a decade ago, I would say that, we're in, that Indonesia is definitely uh, in a better place than it was. Obviously, there are still concerns about the future. A few hundred Indonesians may have gone to the Middle East to fight with the Islamic State. Uh, the larger ideological struggle uh, does not really disappear that quickly. That's something that future generations and the current generations like generations are going to continue to be have to be vigilant about. But by and large, um, I am happier about the situation in India today, in Indonesia today, uh, than I was when I left it about a decade ago. Thank you.